So we're continuing to look at queuing models, seeing how we can apply distributions that we've learned about in statistics and how we can do uh, simulations to make decisions for our organization. So again, with our queuing models, we have some operating characteristics, some performance measures that we have some formulas for, and then we can look at different scenarios and how it changes those metrics. So when it comes to queuing models, we're talking about waiting in line, uh, and we're measuring it based on the probability the system is idle, the average number of units in the queue, so how many people are waiting, the average number of units in the system, so those being served plus those who are waiting, the average time spent in the queue waiting, so how long do you have to wait until you get service, the average time spent in the system, so waiting plus the time that you're getting helped, the probability that a unit has to wait, so what's the probability if you showed up that you have to wait in line, and what's the probability that a certain number of units or people are in the system, those who are waiting and those who are getting served. In our previous video, we looked at the single server model. In this one, we're gonna look at the multiple server model. In both cases, we are assuming that the arrivals are discrete, they are counts. And so we're using a Poisson distribution to represent that at any measure of time, so in a particular day or in a particular minute, uh, there's a certain number of people or events that are arriving. And we're assuming that when it comes to servicing, uh, to checking people out at the cash register, fixing someone's computer, repairing their equipment, we're assuming that most of the customers can be helped in a very short amount of time and a small amount of customers will require a long amount of time to be helped. We looked at the single server model where everyone is in a separate line for a particular person to help them whether this is the line for checking out at the grocery store or whether this is a line of people who are going to be helped. Maybe this is the accountant who is going to help them do their taxes. Maybe this is the IT person who's going to fix their computer. So we have a separate line for each um, employee who is going to be doing the helping. In a multiple server model, what we have is a single line, a single queue, and you go to whoever is next available. So we see this at Canadian Tire, at Walmart, there's a big long line, uh, but there's multiple cashiers who can check you out. And so this would also be going to a help desk or you're calling in for customer service, you go to the next available representative. It's a multiple server model. So when it comes to the multiple server model, we're still assuming that we have Poisson distribution for arrivals and we have um, exponential distribution for how long it takes to help people. Uh, combining those though with this setup here, we get new formulas for our metrics. And since they are derived from an exponential and a Poisson distribution, that's too much math for us to do. Let's take those formulas as given let's put those into our Python code so that we can do some simulations to play with changing the arrival rate and the service rate. So all of these are a function of lambda and mu and k. So let's talk about what those are. All right, so let's start with lambda. Lambda is the arrival rate. What's the average number of arrivals per time period? So in one particular minute of time, how many people show up to stand in the line? What is the service rate? What's the average number of units that can be served in that particular time period? And in this case, we have K because we have multiple servers. And so how many different servers do we have running? How many cashiers are being manned? All right, so let's look at some of these formulas. We have the probability that the system is idle, that there's no one in the queue, which is gonna be one divided by, and then we have a sum from n equals zero to k minus one, lambda divided by u to the power of n divided by n with this exclamation mark means that it's the equivalent of n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three all the way down, okay? So here we have our formulas. We'll do probability the system is idle, average number of units in the queue, which is going to be a function of 
the probability the system is idle, and then we'll adjust that based on arrival rate, service rate, and the number of servers. The average number of units in the system is going to be based on the average number of units in the queue, plus it's going to be based on the ratio of arrival to service rates. We have the average time spent in the queue, which is going to be based on here, this average number of units in the queue divided by the arrival rate. The average time spent in the system, which is waiting or getting served, is going to be a function of that average time spent in the queue plus that time that it takes to get served, which is one divided by the service rate. The probability that a unit has to wait for service is going to be a function of the probability there is nobody in the queue. And then it's also going to depend a lot on the number of servers that we have. So you see all the queues there. What's the probability that a certain number of units are in the system? So we're gonna look at the probability of a certain number, say are there five people in the system, 20 people in the system, and that is going to be a function of the probability there's no one here, uh, as well as the arrival rate, the service rate, okay? And it is also if n is less than k, so if the number of units here is going to be less than uh, the number of servers, then we have one formula. If the number of people in the system is more than the number of servers, then we're going to have a different calculation here. But you don't have to know these formulas or derive these formulas. What you need to do is use them. So let's use them by going into our code. So if you're going to use these queuing models, the nice thing is, is the code is already done for you. Uh, and uh, in order to do this math, we're going to import pandas as PD. You're also going to need to import math. And that's because the factorial, that K with an exclamation mark or N with an exclamation mark, that was equal to N minus N times N minus one times N minus two and so on. Um, we need the math function to do that. So here we're going to create a function that is for the multi-serve. We're gonna use those same measurements and we're simply taking the formulas that you just saw on the previous screen and we're putting them into Python. So we'll take these same formulas and we'll put them in there. So here we can see P sub naught and we have that lambda divided by mu to the N. So that's gonna be our, um, so lambda divided by mu to the power of N and then we're dividing that by N factorial. So you can see here that's this math dot factorial times X, okay? And we're going to do a loop, okay? So we're actually, the reason that this is an X here and not an N is because when you go back into the formula, see this is the sum of, it's taking the sum of this from N equals zero to K minus one. So what we've done is we've put in, anytime there's an N, we put in a, an X, and then we loop through all the values of n from zero to k minus one. So we're doing this sum here using a loop where we're gonna put all the n's, we're gonna make them x, and then go from x equals zero to x equals k minus one. Okay, so that's what that is there in the code. So that's all this here. Now, in order to run this, we need a lambda, we need a mu, and we need a k. We need to know how many servers there are. And so these formulas here, I won't go through these, they match those ones we just saw on the previous screen. We need our function to output the values for all of these, P naught, LQ, and so on. Now, we want to make sure that when we call this command multi-serve, that the output it gives us, we know which one is the P naught, the LQ, the L, and so forth. So this list that you have down here, should be copy paste matching this because this will just output the number comma number comma number and you need to know which one is which. So we will identify them here as they come out of the function and here when we send them out of the function. So then they, they match. All right, so let's run that. 
And then we have our multi-serve probability. Just like before, we want to run a loop so that we can see what are the different, uh, what's the probability there's five people? What's the probability there's six people? What's the probability there's seven people? So we're going to do n probability equals an empty list. The multi-serve prob um, function has an extra variable, which is that n for probability there's five people, probability there's six people. And then for i and n, it's going to go through this. Now notice in our formula before, the formula was slightly different depending on if the n was less than, if the number of people we're looking at is less than the number of servers, or if the number of people we're considering in the system is more than the number of servers. Then we get two different formulas. So what we have here is that we have our loop with the if else. And you'll recall our if else from when we looked at how to do Python code and we had our if else statements are conditional. So here for i in n, if i is less than or equal to k, then we do this formula here, else do this formula. And then it's going to take that information and it's going to append it to that empty list and underscore prob. And then because we like things in table format, it's going to outside of that loop, it's going to create a data frame. So we need to import pandas as PD output and then have it be the number and the probability and return that information. So let's give this a try. Let's start with our initial assumption. Lambda equals 0.6. So we have less than one person arriving every minute. Mu equals 0.9, so we're servicing about every 90% of every minute where we can go through someone and help them out. And we'll look at n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, but let's assume there's two cash registers, two people working. Notice again, lambda and mu, lambda has to be less than mu in order to um, keep this running. All right, so let's do our multi-serve and output. Let's use our dictionary. We, this is the same code you saw before so that we can have it print some output and tell us the probability idle, the average unit in the queue, the average unit in the system, the average time in the queue, and so on. So here, with two servers, we have the probability that they're idle is 43% of the time. The average units in the queue is less than one, the average units in the system is less than one. We have a lot of idle. <laughs> uh, so here in this case, if this is the rate, remember lambda and mu, lambda is the arrival rate and mu is the service rate. Based on this, we really probably don't need that second server because we have 43% idle. We're paying two servers and a lot of times they're sitting there. The benefit to it, of course, is that the average time in the queue is less than a minute. So really we have no queue. Um, and the average time in the system is only slightly more than a minute because you're only waiting a couple seconds before someone can see you. So in this particular system, we're probably a bit overbuilt. It's not unreasonable to ask people to wait, uh, you know, more than 10 seconds. Uh, so uh, we can, we probably don't need this. If we change this, let's try something else. So let's do lambda 0.8, mu 0.9. Run it again here. In this case, the probability we're going to be idle is 30%. The average units in the system is 1. Uh, the average time in the queue is uh, still less than, um, less than a minute and the average time in the system is just over one minute. All right, let's try here. So let's assume that people are arriving at the same rate that we're servicing them. In the previous model, right, it would break because you've got an infinite queue. This time though, we can handle that because we have two servers. So what happens is we go down to a probability of idle of 25%. The average time in the system is just over a minute, not too bad. What if we have a lot of people arriving? Every minute we have two people arriving. 
we can check out here this scenario. And so you can see here the probability that it's idle is a negative percent. So we're negative, we're never idle. Notice that these are all negative numbers which aren't possible. Uh, so this combination has broken the system. Okay. So if you're getting negative numbers for probabilities for time, uh, then you know you got an issue here, right? So we'll go back. All right. Now, if we want to, sorry, just rerun that. If we want to look at what is the probability that a certain number of people are in the system, so this was the scenario where it is uh, 0.8 is the arrival time, the average number of arrivals per time period. So they're still coming um, more than every minute. And our service time was sitting at uh, 0.9. Then when we run this one, we're calling that second function here. And we need to give it some values for n, which we gave it here, 0 through 6. And so when we do this here, we'll see that the probability that the system is idle is at 30% we saw before. The probability that there are six people in the queue is pretty remote. Um, the probability there's three people in the queue is 5%. Really, for the most part, there's either going to be nobody in the queue or just one person in the queue uh, based on the current setup.